Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. You can see my shoes in the background, that's really unprofessional of me. Uh, but we, this is a horror movie <laughs> podcast, uh, this is a news edition that we do every week and I'm distracted for two reasons. One, that Tim's internet's back to working normally so I can see him again, which is nice. Uh, and secondly, <laughs> that porno moustache that he is rocking <laughs> right now is very distracting. I'm not going <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> the audio <laughs> listeners are missing out on so much right now. <laughs> the eye, the eyebrow movement, the <laughs> what, what would I call that rimming that you were just doing? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Tim is here. Tim, Tim is up here. That's Tim. We're going to have a horror movies. Hola. <laughs> Oh, it's good to go. Out. This is, I feel like every so often Tim just does something. Just, just so like he started doing that cycling thing at his desk just to make me laugh and giggle while we're recording. And now I feel like he's giving himself this mustache just so that I'll be distracted for a while. That's the only I reason. Mean, I mean, you know, most people would probably think it's because I want to look good for my wife, but sure. No, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Those people are idiots. <laughs> it's all for me. It's called romance. Mm. Look up. Uh, <laughs> so we'll I was start. thinking about wearing my face mask and then doing like a dramatic reveal. Oh, like take it off. <laughs> oh, very, very swish. Uh, so we'll get into the horror movie news then. Uh, so we'll start <laughs> off. Mike Flanagan's a name that we've been, you know, talking about for a long time. And uh, this is not sure. about the news that he's doing. Uh, revival. Yeah, it's revival. Yes. Is this oh, the okay. Netflix thing? I've not actually read this no, uh, no, no. yet. Because he's doing a new Netflix. Uh, show oh, as well the, the haunting of blind manor no he's done another one because he's that's the sequel oh. to hell hell uh hell yeah. house <clears throat> right. or hell house whatever it was and mm-hmm. apparently him and his writing team are doing another netflix show as well but oh, this is okay. the movie news uh, we're talking about here not that, we, <laughs> not that we never do tv news we did hellraiser last week if it's if it's super important and relevant but sure, sure, May, sure. Mayflag is working on a film uh stephen king uh what a shock mm-hmm. he's done a stephen king adaptation <laughs> it's not like he's never done those before uh so right. Yeah, so he's working on Revival. Uh, he's, he's working with Warner Brothers. Uh, he's, he's only writing it right now, but he's got an option to direct it. And given that he seems to direct about five things a year, which, in a weird way, makes him the perfect director for Stephen King. And Because oh, sure. Stephen <laughs> King churns out like five books a year, so... Yeah. He's perfect for him. It's a match made in heaven. Mm-hmm. Or hell, as the case may be. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so here's the description of the, the book here. Uh, the novel focused on a relationship between a heroin addicted musician and a dubious father or sorry a dubious faith healer with a hidden agenda the minister obsessed with trying to find a way to communicate with his departed wife and child but ends up connecting to a lovecraftian horror i'm 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 mildly intrigued yeah um i read this book a while ago and uh, i'll be honest i don't remember like too much of it um I don't know maybe if it's a headspace I was reading it at at, at the time um but I I wasn't like super into it but I do know like some people that really like it um so I I'm excited definitely to see uh Flanagan's take on it cuz obviously you know <laughs> like a you know big Flanagan fan and uh especially his king ad- adaptations I think have all been uh, really good so far so I'm uh, definitely excited for this Yeah I I'm, I'm I'm kind of excited for it cuz it's not cuz I, I like Doctor Sleep well enough but I think the I did have issues with the the shining sequely parts of it, so I'm sure. kind of excited that this is more standalone and can just mm-hmm. be its own thing, and hopefully it, it it you know deals with that that ending issue that uh, King and mm-hmm. Flanagan both seem to fall, <laughs> fall victim to. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so yes, and you don't remember the book that well because everything that you did pre mustache is just a blur now at this point. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I figured. Uh, we'll move on then to uh, Elizabeth Moss, who apparently wants mm. to be a scream queen because after Invisible Man, she's she's got keeping her toes dipped in the horror mm. world. So mm. Neon has acquired the rights to Josephine Decker's Shirley. Uh, it had its had its premiere at Sundance. Uh, so we talked about a few of these movies last week. So Sundance movies have been picked up by various uh, distributors, mm-hmm. but they're going to release this everywhere on June fifth, twenty twenty. So you mm-hmm. know, pretty soon. Uh, so Elizabeth Moss stars as Shirley Jackson, the influential writer uh, who wrote the classic ghost story, The Haunting of Hill House. Uh, speaking mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. 
that Netflix adaptation which we just brought up. Uh, the yeah. film tells the story of what happens when a young couple moves in with the famed author Shirley Jackson and her Bennington College professor husband Stanley uh, Hyman. The young couple hopes to start a new life, but instead find themselves fodder for a psychodrama that inspires Shirley's next novel. So this is a story about how crazy Shirley Jackson must have been because <laughs> all the horror stories she wrote. Uh, mm-hmm. But if this is a chance for Elizabeth Moss to act crazy, there could be potential mm-hmm. in that. Yeah, uh, I, I think she looks pretty cool, Like uh, at least the... Um, you know, like I, I saw some... Uh, pictures going around associated with the article and um yeah so i like the hot, look at some hot scoops tim you got some uh, hot <laughs> hot behind the scenes photos <laughs> no i mean just some i saw some people like uh you know <laughs> green capping it and stuff uh, i i know like um some people that really like moss uh or well i'm sorry <laughs> they really like shirley jackson so like they're really excited when this uh broke but um yeah it could be cool i, I saw people referring to it as like a psycho drama so i don't know how horror it, it's gonna be but um i'm definitely intrigued by it i feel like i feel like it's gonna be a slow burn but it probably will technically be a horror movie by the end especially since mm-hmm. because it's about someone who was a horror author i feel like there's going to be allusions to some of her work sure by the time it, it's over uh i have no idea is, is this like is this complete fictional this idea that she was crazy or that, that she like <laughs> is this based on any sort of like she had that type of personality. Not necessarily there was a, a you know a situation where this couple moved in with her and her husband, which is kind of yeah. unique in and of itself. But mm-hmm. like, is there truth to this that she was kind of maybe yeah. off? <laughs> yeah, I mean, as far as I know, I'm yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I've I've read the Haunting of Hill House, which uh, you know is a great book, and you know Shirley Jackson rules. Uh, but yeah, I really don't know too much about her personal life. <laughs> Shirley Jackson rules. Put that on the cover. Hell yeah. Put that Tim, Tim Vergilish, twenty twenty. Yep. Uh, put that on there. Uh, so that is that is Shirley, uh, the simple title of that one. That'll mm. take us on to Shudder acquiring another film here. Mm. They've acquired Joko Anwar's Sundance again. Sundance. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Here we go. Hold on. Um, Empetigor. That sounds about right. Empetigor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the film is a horror thriller about a woman who <laughs> discovers that her neighbors think she is cursed and want to kill her. That sounds fun. Obviously, this yeah. is a uh, this is a uh, uh, from the director of Satan Slaves, mm-hmm. uh, which we actually did on streams. Uh, I don't know, two years ago, maybe something like that. Yeah. Uh, so this has been acquired by Shudder, and it is going to be uh, arriving in the US, Canada, and the UK on July 23rd. So, we, despite the fact that we are a horror movie podcast and we review a lot of horror movies, we tend to kind... I mean, this is not, this is not even intentional, but we kind of almost don't pay attention to Shudder that much. And I, I think partly... I think it's two reasons. One, if we had to pay attention to every new Shudder movie, <coughs> we'd never get anything that's not a new movie done. We'd have no time for classics. And two, <laughs> there is... I'd say a healthy percentage of them are fine ignoring like they're, they're kind of sure. th- those small mm. straight to VOD movies that well mm-hmm. there's the odd diamond there don't get me wrong I'm sure there's some stuff that we've missed and we should pay attention mm-hmm. to recommendations when they come in but uh, given that this director already made something kind of notable this is maybe more likely something we're going to look at but oh, yeah. uh, how do you feel how do you feel about this oh I'm super excited uh, I mean you know, if you go back to our review, I, you know, I, I think I like Satan Slaves quite a bit more than you, um, which, you know, I think you were kind of just like, okay on it, but I, uh, I'm not, I was actually a really big fan, so I am totally down for, um, you know, this guy's next thing, especially the premise, I think, sounds pretty cool, so yeah. uh, I, this is like, pretty exciting. Yeah, Satan Slaves felt pretty generic to me. I think this movie, I like the premise more. So, because mm-hmm. I, I never really had a problem with the direction, I don't think. I mean, it's been a while though. So, I mean, if someone goes back to that review and I, I the first thing I say is, "Oh, the direction's all over the place. How's, <laughs> this idiot doesn't know what he's doing." Fair enough. I just don't remember. <coughs> but I don't remember the direction being my issue with it. So, uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm optimistic. I'll give it a try. I, I'm, yep. I'm not going to have a bad attitude, <laughs> as I'm often accused of doing. <laughs> I, I give every film I watch a fair chance. Sure. 
Okay, that's not entirely true. We watched Simple Still Skin <laughs> this weekend, and it wasn't exactly. I, I, I like I went in thinking it was going to be anything but shit. But still, mm. but still. But you are surprised. <laughs> that's a tease. That's a tease. You'll get that. Uh, the review of the rump uh, soon. Uh, next up, Children of the Corn. Yes. We, so <laughs> stop we, right there. <laughs> so we may. So we're back to more Stephen King. I actually, I'll be honest. I always mm. forget this is Stephen King related. Mm. The Children of the Corn. I just, I, you know, I know the name because it's, you know, it's a movie. It's a thing. I always forget like that. fourteen movies. <laughs> yeah, it's like fourteen movies. So this is one of those franchises we've not started yet. And unfortunately, if there's going to be a new one, we may have a reason to like fire through all <laughs> double digits of these movies. Uh, I do but, have a, a DVD that has uh, at least the first six <laughs> on there. First six on one disc. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so. Yeah, so so production, of course, is shut down for the most part. Uh, but th- there are some places that are still letting things shoot. And believe it or not, one of those <laughs> things that fields. are currently shooting in, I think, Australia? Uh, oh, okay. I could be wrong. Yeah, in Australia, uh, is a mm. new version of Children of the Corn. Uh, which Ooh, was, was, the was marsupials. <laughs> if they call it Children of the Corn marsupials, <laughs> like I'll give it points just, just for the balls. Just for the balls it has. Uh, so... Yeah, this movie wasn't even announced yet. This is like the, mm-hmm. the, the, the news that this is shooting right now is the announcement of the movie. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> Kurt Wimmer. <coughs> Are you familiar with Kurt Wimmer, the filmmaker Kurt Wimmer? Do you know what he's done? Uh, no. <laughs> I do. That is the director okay. of Equilibrium. The, oh, okay. The sci-fi actioner starring Christian Bale from like 2001. Yeah. Which... I actually have fond memories of that movie. Everything he made set after that is apparently complete and utter garbage, but I have fond memories of <laughs> Equilibrium. I'm scared to sure. go back and watch it again because I'm worried that it's going to take mm-hmm. take what I thought was good away from me. But uh, So he's actually working on a new Children of the Corn in Australia. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, producer Lucas Foster from Ford v Ferrari. So we got a dream team here, apparently. Uh, it's a remake <laughs> of the original and... Yeah, they've been shooting since March 23rd. Or actually, no, the, the lockdown in Mar- mm. uh, Australia started on March 23rd. So they've been shooting regardless. Mm. So, yeah. Man. Yeah. <sighs> if I had known, I would have um, you know, planned my Australian vacation a little differently. I oh, yeah. Could... To have, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because you can just fly to Australia right now, Tim. That's an option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, apparently, uh, Foster, the producer, secured an exemption to the general quarantine rules with the outdoor <laughs> shooting locations, limited casting crew, and safety protocols that have been put in place to allow filming to continue. Because the next Children <laughs> of the Corn remake is the movie that's so important that it had to keep shooting right now. <laughs> well i mean uh, i'd love to take a look at that script if it's that good <laughs> that they're like willing to risk everyone's life <laughs> on set i can't Sounds wait till we can watch this it's just so i can sit and crack jokes about how they risk their lives to make yeah. this movie everyone on set was risking their <laughs> life <laughs> oh, holy uh, shit hold on, a minute, hold on a minute the last children of the corn movie came out in 2018 what the oh, hell yeah. children of the corn runaway you even know the name. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm gonna uh, say I'm a cornhead. <laughs> I can't. Oh, we've got a term for it now. Cornhead. That's just yeah. wonderful. <laughs> that is just wonderful. Uh, so, yes. Uh, all right. I guess we'll move on. There's a new Children of the Corn remake coming. <laughs> uh, if I mean, there's no premise here for the movie, but I mean, the Children of the Corn, kids killing <laughs> adults, is you know, same yeah. thing what it is so mm-hmm. all right let's uh move on then let's move on uh to mm-hmm. the final news story of the week yeah, that's right it's a, it's a quiet news week uh, I, I guess mm-hmm. because of the quarantine and stuff you know not everything's running th- as much as it, it could be mm-hmm. so uh we have a new film starring scout taylor compton and if you're forgetting that name i don't blame you because she was laurie strode in rob zombie's halloween uh, uh yes. so the the fake laurie the false laurie <laughs> as you were as it were uh, but she's going to be in a new film called Starlight, a supernatural horror film. Uh, it's just been acquired mm. by Company 1091. And they're going to be releasing this on demand on August 4th this year. Okay. Uh, it stars a bunch of other people you've never heard of. Okay. So uh, the plot involves a kind-hearted teenager 
uh, Dylan, who crashes into a beautiful young woman while skateboarding. She turns out to be a <laughs> world famous pop star who is on the run from her handlers. Well, he and his group of friends try to help this mysterious woman. Unexplained events begin to occur within the home when Beeb's threatening handler, Anton, shows up demanding her return. The teenager's refusal makes him unleash a barrage of dire and otherworldly consequences that turns a fun graduation party into a night of living hell. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to make of this either. It's, uh, I mean, I could see this maybe being good. Like, it's not... The, the premise isn't necessarily... You know, someone runs into someone, they need to end up having to help them because there's, like, stuff coming. I mean, the horror <laughs> twist where stuff gets supernatural does feel kind of like, oh, that's, like, different and out of nowhere. Left field, but... At the same time, like, I don't know anyone involved in this like to care about it or to expect yes. quality. Yeah, and, and off the bat, it doesn't really super interest me. Um, maybe if we get like really good trailer, or start hearing some buzz about it. But as of right now, it's like, yeah, not my kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's Starlight, uh, and that's actually all the horror news this week. Uh, there wasn't any interesting trailers uh, to to look at. Mm-hmm. And there, there was one that was kind of like an interesting trailer, but it wasn't really a horror movie. Uh, so. Mm. Even though it starred uh, Scream Queen Lulu Wilson, who is now like 14, so now I feel old. Uh, oh. <laughs> but that's the little girl from uh, Annabelle Creation mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Ouija, Origin of Evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's in a movie with Joel McHale and Kevin James. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Prisoners take over the house and <laughs> she has to like sneak about on her own and whatever uh but it wasn't really a horror movie it was more of a thriller sure but not a horror movie so sure uh yeah no trailers then basically so yeah short and sweet this week with the with the horror mm-hmm. movie news i don't know if you watched any other horror this week that you'd like to throw out there i did mm-hmm. not i don't think i watched a couple of non-horror <laughs> stuff uh mm-hmm. i watched roadhouse for the first time which was oh nice <laughs> which was not up to the standard that everyone claimed it was i have to admit mm. but I think it's fun, but yeah, I don't know. It's <clears throat> like not not the best uh, example of that type of movie, I suppose. But I think it was just too long. Like I think if it was ninety minutes, sure. I would appreciate it for the. Like I think I liked it when it was about him coming to clean up the bar and we were meeting all the cr- mm. cookie characters that were causing trouble. When, once it became more of a western where there's like a villain and like it was going after his friends and stuff, I'm like, okay, I'm just kind of bored now. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. Don't be upset. People. <clears throat> Tell, Tim, horror stuff though. What did you? I uh, I watched a, a movie that's available uh, for free on Tubi uh, called The Neon Dead. Um, can, can, can I just can I uh, just clarify here? Was this Tubi or not Tubi? <laughs> uh, it's it's on the. I think I talked about it before when we watched. Uh, Evil that was Bong, a great joke. You but, know, it's a good joke. <laughs> You're laughing yeah, a lot. No, it's a, it's a funny joke, but yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, if anyone doesn't have it, Tubi is a free service. I don't know how they make money. <laughs> they just uh, put movies on there. Um, usually not too many ads. Um, but yeah, uh, Neon Dead. Um, <clears throat> it's not great. <laughs> it's uh, it's you know pretty low budget. Um, not sure if it's Australian or New Zealand. Um, but it you know people seem to have uh, you know those kind of accents <laughs> in it. Uh, <laughs> Got it, mate. Uh, yeah um but it's it's like a typical zombie movie but the zombies kind of all have this like neon glow in the dark makeup so it, it kind of looks cool but it doesn't really the story's not that great and uh, you kind of appreciate it on like a cheesy level but i wouldn't say it's necessarily anything great um the other thing i did or that uh you know that i've been watching or starting to watch which isn't necessarily horror i guess i mean it depends <clears throat> i think um if you talk to some people they would put this uh up as horror um but uh, you know it, it depends on I, I guess what your perception is but i started watching the hannibal uh tv show and we're about oh, okay. um, maybe a couple episodes into the second season uh, i've always heard it's great and uh I, I think i tried watching it a few times and just uh not because of the show but would just like fall off for whatever reasons and obviously since you know we have nothing but time now um 
yeah, I've been catching up on it and uh, I've, I've actually been enjoying it quite a bit uh, this watch through um, some really cool like inventive serial killer stuff and like, um, you know, a lot of really good gore, uh, especially surprising for you know, the fact that this was like a network TV show <laughs> that was like <laughs> on like a weekday or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, it, you know, if you like horror, that's kind of, you know, serial killer crime focus, it's a really good show. Yeah, I uh, I have to admit, I'm kind of in the in the minority here because I, I don't like Hannibal TV show that much. Uh, I thought it was mm-hmm. just okay, uh, and I hated the third mm-hmm. season. But you know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'll, yeah. not, not to put your put your expectations low for season two. You may like it. You may love it. But I, I, I think I've heard as much. Yeah, people say that. Uh, yeah, the later seasons aren't as good. I, I forget if it's three or four seasons. Is yeah. there the last one? Yeah, three. Oh, okay. Gotcha for uh, three seasons of playtime. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I'm having fun with it, at least for now. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, so that's pretty much the, the horror news this week. Short and sweet, but uh, hopefully there'll be some more stuff to talk about next week. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. You can let us know about this, what you think of the stories that popped up today. Uh, you can, of course, get us on the Twitters at Screams Midnight. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash TV and get some bonuses for your troubles. And of course, it's always appreciated if you do give us a like and a comment and a subscribe and all those usual YouTube things. Uh, but that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching Scary Movies, guys, and we will see you next time.